What's going on guys? Cop Cutlass here, uh, making this video uh, for one of two reasons. One, I am going to talk about the LS engine and I absolutely hate when guys bash guys who wants to do it. And two, a little update. So, bench is a mess. I got stuff everywhere. Car's ready for the track. We made a couple of changes. Uh, things are going in the right directions. Had carburetor pumps, made videos on that. Been busy the last week and a half pretty much. We did a bunch of little stuff. Um, so I guess I'll get right to it. So, you know, I always see guys who ask, like, has anyone done an LS swap? And instantly, before anybody helps, they give this guy a ton of crap because he's putting an LS in his Buick or his Pontiac or an Oldsmobile or putting an LS in his Fox Body Mustang. And guys are like, you know, that's not the way they were intended to be built, blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit. I'll explain why. People seem to forget that the essence of hot riding, the essence of going fast was finding the lightest car and putting the biggest engine in it. Guys were putting Mercury, you know, V12s or whatever, I'm not the biggest Ford guy, but those were the first hot rod engines. Guys were putting GMC blowers in them and making them fast and cobbling things together. And that is the essence of speed and hot rodding. And if it wasn't for that, we would not have muscle cars because there was a demand for power by people that were building stuff on their own. So, um, you know, you want to talk about the small block Chevy? Chevy's done it twice already. They did it with the small block Chevy. The small block Chevy killed the flathead for it, period. As soon as the small block Chevy came out, that was the power plant of choice. And guys are putting 394 Oldsmobiles and Willys Coupes, you know, on gassers, they were running, you know, all kinds of stuff just to go fast. And these were like our heroes, your Stonewoods and Cook. You know, they were putting 394 Olds engines in Willys Coupes. And you guys had, you know, uh, Chevys being put into tea buckets and stuff like that once the favorable flathead went to the wayside because the small black Chevy had modern technology for its time. And the small block Chevy, you know, was made for over 50 years. And then you got the LS that came out, a bunch of technology behind it, you know, great falling cylinder heads. The iron blocks are plenty strong, they're plentiful in junkyards, and guys are finding great cars to put them in, whether it be a GMA body, Buick Olds, Pontiac, a Fox body, you know, a Thunderbird, a Fairmont, a G body, whatever. Guys want to go fast and they want to use the path of least resistance. Why would you want to spend a ton of money on ancient antiquated technology? Our heroes, the pioneers of the sport had the latest and greatest. The Bill Grumpy Jenkins of the world, Gap and Roush, you know, uh, Bob Glidden. You want to talk about all the drag racing legends that, you know, supported the sport that practice the sport and they were heroes, they had the latest technology available to them. If you were to, you know, bring racing from then into now, it wouldn't make sense to use an outdated power plant because it wouldn't be competitive. And that's not to say it can't be competitive, it would just cost a lot more. Um, I still run Oldsmobile Power on my cars. The Olds has a 355 cubic inch Olds. The Pontiac has a 350 Olds. Again, I've been a big small block Oldsmobile guy for a reason, and I'll explain. And then that's actually up there gonna be the first big block I'm gonna be building. I've been pretty much building small block stuff for the last 13, 14 years I've been in the hobby. Um, I built the Buick 350 back in high school at one point. Um, and I also built a small block Chevy and, um, but I've stuck with Oldsmobiles strictly because the group of guys that I got hooked up with after high school, that's all they ran. So they had parts, they had stuff flying around and people were willing to help me. And once I found out that guys that started out, you know, you'd get a regular Cutlass Coupe, S Coupe or Supreme, something that came with a 350, these guys would try building them up and they wouldn't know what to do or they'd have the wrong people build it, or it would fail. They'd go to a big block. Why am I gonna fuck around with this small cubic inch crap? They'd go to a big block. And what do I do? I come in and I buy people's old stuff, scrounge the good parts, scrap the bad stuff, 
build my own. I've been doing that for well over a decade. And it's worked for me. But if I was to start from scratch, when I first got into the hobby, you know, 12, 13, 14 years ago, when I got really serious about it, the LS engine swaps were just starting to become a thing. Um, and I actually remember back in high school, so this had to be back like 05, 04, they had this uh, rusty looking Nova on a hot rod with an LS that was insanely fast. It was a 5.3. And that was, I think, one of the turning points for LS power plants and the swaps became more popular. And yes, they do cost money to do, but once you do it, the LS, bang for your buck, will deliver the most power per dollar. This small block olds, I have, if it wasn't for the fact that I had friends that I traded labor with, I had people that gave me old parts, I bought used parts. The short block, which was a, an amazing freebie, had lightweight forged pistons in it. If it wasn't for that fact, this engine would cost me to build from start to finish way more than it would have cost me to do an LS engine. And it took me some time to build. But there's a reality behind all of it is again, you gotta pick your poison. And if you can't work one angle, you have to find another one. And for most guys, um, I mean, I don't think I'm unique in the aspect of what I'm doing, but a lot of guys are like, well, I'm building this, I wanna start with the best of the best. I'm like, what do you got that hasn't blown up? I'll take it for parts. That's me. I'm always willing to try something. I'm, it's, again, it's not unique. People have been doing this for a long time. Budget builds, scrounge builds, you name it. It's been done over and done. The majority of people out there aren't willing to do it. And people who wanna go out less because it's cheap, reliable power get a lot of shit for it. And I'm sorry, but it's a great engine. If you know you want to have a solid, reliable, you know, hot street strip engine, an LS with very little work will run 12s with pretty much stock components. So uh, if you guys follow like the Holly LS Fest and you get all the coverage from like Hot Rod and Car Craft, you see these guys with like near stock combination with like 308 gears running like. 1250s, like, dude, I was I'm, I was running 1220s with 390s in the 3500 stall and got like five miles per gallon. Is it drive on the street? Yes, I could drive it anywhere. Back when it was a 1220 car, it's it's 11 best so far is 1189. I can still drive it anywhere, but it's a pig on gas. I can't go anywhere without spending 25, 30 bucks on gas. Um, so for guys who want to run the LS, it's like. Um, I hate seeing the static because in essence that's that's hot riding that's what it's all about the hobby needs something like the LS to come along and get people engaged it, it's the cheapest foot in the door for people that want to go racing find a Fox body they're still plentiful they're still cheap find an LS throw nitrous at it throw a boost at it they're cheap and plentiful at the junkyards the recipes are out there what works what doesn't people say it's unoriginal but then again, those same guys are running engines that have been around for 50 years. What do you call original? I mean, yeah, it might be original power for the car, but like it's not, it's not original, it's not new, it's not anything unique. So that's the whole chip on my shoulder about guys that, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm pro LS, I haven't done it, but if, again, if I was to start from scratch and I had the money, I would have gone LS 13, 14 years ago. But I found a system that works for me and I'm sticking with Olds and no power at, at the moment. And uh, maybe the Pontiac one day will get LS once we're done with the big block because um, with the small block, I'm at the tail end of how I like to do things. And from here it gets expensive and I want to keep getting faster. Uh, it just doesn't work for me uh, to spend a lot of money. It's it, This is a hobby it doesn't pay at all why spend money that is not necessary to get spent so i can understand why guys go out less um some guys i think uh value the originality of cars too much like i get it if you have like a super rare numbers matching like w30 or gs or gto like i get it you shouldn't but then again i'm the kind of person where if i got that car dirt cheap and i can fix it up and piss people off i would totally do it why because that's 
that's uh that's high riding man if you're not pissing somebody off you're not doing it right you know uh people were doing awkward swaps back then and it's nothing new it's been done it's been overdone the only thing that's changed is there's a lot of technology behind it now and why would we not take advantage of it why would we let it sit by the wayside when um you know it's cheap power if you want to keep your car original that's fine but i think the LS swaps should be encouraged because um, that's that's speed, that's hot riding. Somebody who's put an LS in a car is putting it in for a reason. They want something from it. They want that technology. They want that reliability. And I'm sorry, I have a 2010 Suburban with 185,000 miles on it with a 5.3 LS. All original, never been opened up. You couldn't do that to one of these old engines. You can go more than 60,000 miles without opening up and replacing a timing chain. So think about that. Reliability, yeah. Modern power is reliable, period. There's no way around it. A car that ran 100,000 miles back in the 60s unopened was almost unheard of. Did it happen? Probably, but it was very unheard of. So again, there's a lot of modern technology behind the LS to the point where I think if people want to do it, man, do it. But I just hate seeing people getting battered over it. Like, I get it. You love Buicks. You love Buick Power. I love Oldsmobile Power. I've been running Oldsmobile Power since I got into this whole deal. Uh, I may have built a Chevy and a Buick in the past, but they never found their way into a car and I sold them. And then this came along. That's actually why I sold the Buick engine I built uh, to buy this car. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think people need to lighten up. The LS swap is good for the hobby. It's just an engine. I mean, they got these things down to the point where you can undo shit and nothing's hurt. And I think the people that are mad are people that are afraid of getting eclipsed. Well, unfortunately, that's already happened. You got some really fast, like, stock bottom end cars that, yeah, they probably see some proper machining stuff and upgraded bolts and stuff, but they're running, like, nines, high eights on boost with some stock components so that proves its strength you couldn't do that with old iron at all so guys keep that in mind that's kind of my rant that's kind of my i might be a i wouldn't even call myself a hardcore old wheel power guy i just it's been strictly um circumstantial for me i found my niche and i worked it and I, it's worked for me for over a decade and there's guys that have, you know, stuck to, I've watched a lot of my friends stick with Oldsmobile Power and have nothing but problems. And they've spent a lot more money than I have. My wife just burped if you heard that. Um, so, I've had friends that have spent way more money than I would ever, that I could ever justify spending on going, you know, tens. I just, I couldn't see it. You know, spending nine grand on an engine that's going to run tens, you know or an engine that costs 12 grand to run nines, just to keep it old and power, it doesn't, it just doesn't click with me. I'm a cheap bastard. I need cheap. I have priorities. I don't want to let the car sit, okay? Uh, people say, oh, patience pays off. Yeah, it does, but the longer it sits, the more comfortable you are with it sitting, and then it becomes a dusty piece of crap like everybody else, and that's what happens. People wait too long. Make it happen, make it move, enjoy it, and that's it, period. If somebody's putting an LS in old iron, just be lucky that they're saving old iron because you can go buy a brand new 5 Mustang and go run low 12s all day long effortlessly. That's how far technology has come. When you have a five liter engine making 435 horsepower, maybe more now, last time I remember was 435, that's impressive. That's shit that in the 60s they could only dream of. And you want to talk about competitive, the Coyote class that runs with the NMRA, NMCA, whatever it is, those guys are running a super tight, like, index class, pretty much. They're either all running, like, 1030s or 1050s with Coyote-powered sealed engines. And that's impressive. That's something that never happened in the 60s. So praise technology, because technology is a good thing for the hobby. It's going to engage people. People want to modernize these old cars and not take the beauty from them away, but they want to bring, you know modern creature comforts in one. You know, couches have gotten pretty plush. Why are you gonna have a wooden bench to sit on and watch your TV, right? You make it better. 
but you don't take away from the simple fact that you have to sit down and you just make it more comfortable. So guys, that's my rant. Share, like, subscribe. This is a subject that to me means a lot because I have a lot of friends that are in the Oldsmobiles and I don't think they really understand where I'm coming from where, you know, like power is power, man. You want to go fast? I mean, do it however the hell you want. So guys, again, thank you. Before I start rambling on, I'm going to sign off.